What is an air handling unit? The air handling unit is the fundamental device in air treatment in air conditioning installations regarding proper ventilation flows, cleaning, temperature, and humidity. Heat or cold, as the case may be, comes from external sources, boilers, or refrigeration machines, through water or steam pipes. However, there may be a heat contribution of its own, through electric resistors incorporated into some equipment. Where do we find air handling units? A. Air handling units are found in buildings with medium and large spaces. B. Generally, they are located in the basement, on the ceiling, or on the floors of the building. C. It is also very common to find them around the building. D. Some buildings, especially older skyscrapers, will have only one large air handling unit, usually on the ceiling, but this design is no longer as common in new buildings, because it is very inefficient. E. Currently, it is more common to have several smaller handling units to supply different areas, with better control and conditioning of higher quality spaces. What is the purpose of an air handling unit? 1. To take fresh air from the outside, then clean it, heat it or cool it, humidify it, or dehumidify it. 2. To force the air through ducts around designated areas within a building. 3. Moreover, most units will have an additional duct, to take this used and dirty air out of the facilities and return it to the air handling unit, where a fan returns it to the atmosphere. 4. Part of this return air can be recycled back into the fresh air supply, to save energy. What are the characteristics of a typical air handling unit? We will list them below. 1. In a basic model, we have two ducts, one for supply and one for return air. 2. The air handling unit has a mesh, to prevent objects from entering. 3. At the supply and return inlet, we have some dampers or gates, which are multiple metal blades, that can rotate and close, to prevent air from entering or leaving the handling unit. 4. The dampers can be fully open to allow full air entry or exit, or they can vary their position to restrict the amount of air that can enter or exit. 5. There may be a motorized controller that changes the position of the dampers. 6. After the dampers, there are filters to trap all dirt and dust, and at each filter bank, there will be a pressure sensor that measures the dirt on the filters, and alerts when they need to be replaced. 7. As the filters collect dirt, the amount of air that can pass through them is restricted, causing a pressure drop. 8. Normally, we will have some panel or pre-filters, to catch larger dust particles, and also bag filters to catch smaller dust particles. 9. Then we find heat exchangers to reach the appropriate temperatures. 10. The supply air is measured as it leaves the air handling unit, and is compared with the set point. 11. In the heat exchangers, there is a hot or cold fluid, usually water, or perhaps steam. 12. Centrifugal fans are very common in older, and existing air handling units, but now variable speed control fans are being installed for greater energy efficiency. 13. On the other side of the fan, we will also have a pressure sensor, that will detect if the fan is running. 14. There is also likely to be a duct pressure sensor, shortly after the fan, which will read the static pressure, and in some cases, the fan speed is controlled as a result of the pressure in the duct. 
15. Then we have ducts that send air around the building, to designated areas. 16. We will also have some ducts for return air, which carries all used air out of the building back, to a separate part of the flow. 17. If you are in a cold part of the world, where the air temperature reaches or approaches 0 degrees Celsius, you will have a preheater at the fresh air inlet. Usually, it's an electric heater. 18. When the outside temperature is around 5 degrees Celsius, the heater will turn on and warm the air, to protect the components from freezing inside. 19. Some air handling units have a heat recovery unit placed, between the air outlet and the fresh air inlet. This duct allows some of the exhaust air to be recycled back to the fresh air inlet. 20. Inside the connecting duct, there is an additional damper, to control the amount of air that can be recirculated. 21. The exhaust air has a percentage of CO2, so some CO2 sensors, are needed to monitor its concentration. If the CO2 level is too high, the air cannot be reused. 22. In situations where the air cannot be reused, the mixing damper will close, and all return air will be rejected from the building. 23. However, in recirculation mode, the main air inlet and outlet gates are not fully closed, because we still need a minimum amount of fresh air entering the building. 24. Some buildings require 100% fresh air, so the recirculation strategy cannot be used everywhere. 